You may be seated. We'll turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 2. Tonight we're going to continue our series on the book of Hebrews. My subject tonight, Take Heed, Least We Rift Away. Take Heed. It's a warning from, from the church. Now, the book of Hebrews was originally written to Jewish converts. They were struggling with that newfound faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. These were Jews, and they were being tempted by other Jews to go back to their old ways, to their old rituals, customs, and laws. I wrote myself a little footnote here. It says, the law of the Ten Commandments, it was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But these Jews, they wanted these other Jews who had sent Jesus Christ to go back under the rituals, circumcision and dietary laws and things like that. The Ten Commandments, they are messages from the mountains. They are eternal laws. They never change. So, Hebrews was written to show the all-surpassing excellence of the new and developed covenant that we have in Christ Jesus. A covenant established upon better promises. Everything the writer saying here, he's talking about how much better it is in Jesus. The book of Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the promise, or he is the central figure on every page. That's what excites me about this book. I could not preach this with the authority and the understanding that I have today. I've had to read my Bible, study my Bible, bring the old, bring the new together. That's what I finally discovered that the writer of Hebrews is doing here. And chapter 1 it shows us, we saw this the last study we did on chapter 1, that Jesus is greater than the prophets. Yeah. He is greater than the angels. He is greater than Moses. He is greater than Joshua. He is greater than Aaron, the high priest. He is greater than any of the Old Testament prophets. And the reason the writer uses these comparisons is because all of these held a place of great importance in the Jewish religion. This letter was written to assure these Jews that they had not lost anything by accepting Jesus Christ. But rather they had gained the greatest gift of all which is eternal life. And the Jews wanted to take them back into those old customs and those old rituals. And so the writer is addressing the superiority of Jesus. And you will find him on every page of the book of Hebrews. In Christianity, we don't lose anything. We receive everything because we become children of God. We become heirs of God. And we become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We have actually been born again and Christ lives in us. The mystery of God hid for ages. If the devil had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. All they had in the Old Testament was their sins were covered. But our sins have been removed and cast into the sea of redemption. Never to be brought up again with us in the form. We have a new and a better covenant. Back status upon better promises. And the blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost seals this covenant that we have. Oh, praise God. I tell you, this is a great covenant. Now, in the past, God spoke through his prophets. But in the last days, and what the writer of Hebrews is saying is that he is speaking to us through his son. Of course, we know Jesus is the word, but God is speaking to us through his son. Yeah. <coughs> Hebrews 2 and 1. We're going to read all 18 verses. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, is that any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense or reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which first began to be spoken by the Lord, and then it was confirmed unto us by those that heard them? Verse 4 says, God also buried them with us. Now God doing this, both with signs and wonders, with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his will. But unto to the angels he had not put in subjection the worlds to come where we speak, but in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, 
of the Son of Man that thou visitest him. Putting a lot of Old Testament scripture in these verses. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Thou hast crowned him with glory and honor did to set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things in subjection unto his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection unto him, he left nothing that is not put unto him. But now we see not yet all things put unto him. Sounds like a little double talk. That's why I'm explaining it to you verse by verse. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, but the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste the death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons of the glory to make the captive of their salvation perfect through suffering. Yeah. Verse 11. But he, for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified, listen to this, are all of one, of which cause he is not ashamed to call them the brethren. Amen. Say, I declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church, I will sing praise unto them. And again, I will put my trust in him, and again, behold, I and the children of God which thou hast given me. I love this verse right here. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus, himself also likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Yes. And the good of them who through fear of death were all their lifetimes subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but listen to this, he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be likened to his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Yes. Verse 18 said, For in that he himself has suffered the intent that he is able to suffer or help those which are the intent. I said tonight, take heed, least we away. Let us pray. Father, this is a great, great book. And it was written to show us that all passing superiority of Jesus Christ, our Lord and my Savior. It was written to show us who we are in Christ and what He has done. And how He has brought us into sonship through His precious blood. So Holy Ghost, I ask you to illuminate our thoughts minds in this study that we may understand the word of God more perfectly. And everyone said in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Hebrews 2 and 1, Therefore we ought to give them more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, at least at any time we should let them slip. Now when we talk about drifting, we're talking about backsliding. We're not talking about being lost forever. We're talking about drifting away and backslide. If there was ever a time when you loved the Lord Jesus Christ more than you love him at this present moment, you have backslid. Yes. Amen. If there was ever a time when he meant more to you than he means to you right now, then you have backslid. If there was ever a time when prayer was sweeter to you and worship was more real to you than it is at this present moment, you have backslid. If that were my case, then I would have backslid. I don't want to slide back. I want to see how close I can get to Jesus and still be on planet Earth. Amen. Praise so God. So look at verse 1 again. Hebrews 2 and 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnestly to the things which we have heard. Yes. Since at any time we should let them slip. Now, there are very few people, very few, I look at as a pastor, it breaks my heart to see that I see people who actually, they are not in the house of God. They call me with their problems, they call me with their needs, but they are not in the house of God. I cannot feed them the word of God because they're not here. It's like if you wanted to go to a restaurant and the table was spread, somebody was, was, was spreading the table and they had a great meal waiting for you. If you didn't show up, guess what? You wouldn't get a thing to eat. So there are people that they have actually, but there are very few people who deliberately and in one moment turn their back on God. 
But there are many people who day by day, they drift further and further away from God. Yes, they do. Drifting is a dangerous, dangerous sin because drifting affects the spirit of man, the heart of man. Look at Proverbs 14, 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. That's a powerful verse. The backslider in heart, in the spirit, he shall be filled with his own ways, not with the ways of God. His mind is not being renewed by the word of God. They're not reading their Bible. They're not in church having fellowship with people like precious faith. They have drifted away. They're on the drift, and they're headed for danger. The backslider in heart, he lives a self-centered life rather than a Christ-centered life. Yeah. When you lose your passion for God and withdraw yourself from the church and from service to God, that's a sign that you are backslidden in heart. You don't come to please me. You don't work in this church to please me. You are under order from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Long to Christ and we'll glorify God in our body, in our spirits, and we'll be a great commission church, and we'll take this gospel into all the world. Yes. When you lose your passion for God and withdraw yourself, that's a sign you're back to live. Jeremiah 32 and 32, look at what God said in Jeremiah. Book of Jeremiah 32 and 32. Can a maid forget her ornaments or bride her time? Yet my people, God said, have forgotten me days without number. Amen. That's a terrible condition. I finished the book of Jeremiah. I'm in Daniel now. I'm two months ahead in my Bible reading because I love the Word of God. Some of you are further ahead and some of you are further behind. <laughs> but I encourage you to get into the Word of God, read your Bible, pray every day, seek God, and don't just read it to say I read it. Read it, meditate upon it. Ask God, what does this mean? I don't understand it, Lord. And the Holy Spirit it will illuminate your heart and your mind. Yes. As you can see, drifting is a dangerous, dangerous sin. Drifting affects the heart. And when it affects your heart, guess what? You lose interest in prayer. Perhaps nothing more conclusive proves that the Christian has a backslidden heart than they're losing their interest in the Word of God. When you lose your interest in the Word of God, it's a shame that people are sitting under the sound of my voice and never read their Bible through and say, I can read it. If I was in that condition, I would go and say, I don't read this, I read this, I read this, and I'd say, Holy Spirit, show me what I haven't read. And I would read it and read it and read it until I said, I have read my Bible all the way through. Yes. If that's you, praise God. If you finish it this year, you've been working on 10 years, we will give you a Bible reading certificate to celebrate your victory at the first of the year. Somebody go and praise God. Yes. 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 My little granddaughter, Anna Lee, she loves to do puzzles. And she can take the 500 piece puzzles that she does them so quickly, yet she's only 8 years of age. And it made me think about this story I read years ago. A little boy had a puzzle that had a map of the world on one side. And it was a picture of a man on the other side of that puzzle. His mother asked him to try and put that puzzle together. Well, before very long, the little fellow, he had put the puzzle together and he had the world complete and all in one piece. The puzzle was done with every piece in a lot and she could not believe it. She had no idea that her little boy knew so much about geography. She said, son, how on earth did you do that? And this is Bert Casper, if you missed this. Oh, he said, mother, it was easy. I worked on the side of the puzzle that had the man on it first. And when I got the man right, the whole world was right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, you get the man of the heart right, I promise you, everything in your world will be right. That's a good message in that story. Amen. We ought to give a more earnest heed to what God has spoken and to make sure that the hid man of the heart and the man is right. Once you get you right, 
That's who I have to work on most of the time is me. Amen. Once you get that right, everything else in your world will fall into order. I promise you that. Yes. I was a broken man when I came to God. But I decided I would fix what was wrong with the help and grace of God. And God told me, I said, why is my life so messed up? He said, you have sown bad seed, you have a bad harvest. So do my word, and I will bless your life. Yes. And I have I made a decision at that moment to become a student of the word of God. Praise God. I'm like Jeremiah, I believe that the word will be found out in Look at Hebrews 2 and 2. For the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense for reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken of this by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them with both the signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. I like that he put according to his will. Yes. Because I believe the church should operate in the gifts. But you cannot go beyond your faith level and you cannot go beyond in the gifts what the Holy Ghost is doing through you as an instrument at that moment. It's according to God's will. Yes. Because we have a better covenant, better promises, guess what? We are under greater responsibility to give the Lord more earnest seed. Yes. To the words spoken by the Lord, and to those words that were later confirmed by those that heard it. We have a treasure in the Word of God. Amen. Paul said we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power might be of God and not of us. If you don't renew your mind, and I don't renew my mind with the Word of God, how can we ever realize what a great treasure we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus yes. Christ? Yes. I love teaching this right here. If every word of the Old Testament was steadfast and every neglect of that word was punished, how can we escape punishment if we neglect the word spoken by the Son himself? We have a better cup. We have greater privilege. And that privilege carries a greater accountability with it. Yes. That's why your life should be for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. Yes. If you ever get to that place where I'm crucified by Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. It's not my personal aspiration. It's that I want to do His will. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. If He gave Himself for me, I ought to give myself to Him. It's a great salvation. He took what I had, my sins and my brokenness, and gave me what his had, he had, his gift of righteousness. And the Father calls me his son, and my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Oh, praise God, because you're one of the Hallelujah. Now, this epistle, it was not written to unbelievers. I need to say that. They were not being warned about rejecting this great salvation. They were being warned about neglecting yes. this great salvation. Yeah. That's a tremendous statement. They were not being warned. These were Jewish converts. These were people that had that old covenant, the law with all its rituals, accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So they were not being warned about rejecting Jesus and this great salvation. They will be warned about neglecting this great salvation. Yes. And that's the warning to Jerry Nelson. That's the warning to you and to every born again child of God. Yes. This is a great salvation. Yes. And this salvation it can be understood when we consider things such as what I'm listing. This is a great salvation because it, it includes forgiveness. It includes salvation. It includes sanctification. It includes the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It includes uh, fellowship with one another and with God. And it includes future glory. Yes. It's a great salvation because of the greatness of its first preacher. It was spoken by the Lord himself. And then those who wrote the, the, the word of God as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost, they 
confirmed his words, and God confirmed their word with signs and wonders and divers miracles in many places. They yeah. turned their world upside down. Yeah. This is a great salvation because God gave witness. Yes. God gave witness to what Jesus did. God gave witness to what the early church, the people that came out of like the love room of Jesus. With signs and wonders and gifts of the Holy Ghost. We have a great salvation. And just as Christ gave himself completely and took to the will of God, yes. we need to give ourselves completely, totally, and wholly to the will of God. Yes. That's what the writers say. That this is not something to be neglected. This is something to be treasured. Yes. That we have a great salvation. That was delivered to us. And he goes on to explain to us. Hebrews 2 and 5. For unto the angels had he not put in subjection the worlds to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, that crowned him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thy hand. He's quoting Psalms 8, verse 4, right there. That has put all things, verse 8, that has put all things in subjection under his feet, under man's feet. Thank you, He's talking about man's feet. Keep that in mind. For that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not all things put under him. Man lost his dominion. Dimension. Dominion. Verse 9. But we see Jesus. Who's made a little over the names for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, yes. that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. This is some of the greatest verses in the Bible. The superiority of Jesus over the angels is evidenced by his dominion over all of creation. This authority was not committed to the angels. This is Catholic. This authority that Jesus took back, this authority was originally committed to man. God gave man dominion over everything. Yeah. And man sinned and handed that dominion over yeah. to the devil. And man came under the power of sin, yeah. death, and destruction. Yeah. So this authority that was given to man was lost by man. This authority is now recovered in Christ Jesus by the man, Jesus Christ. That is one God and one mediator between God and man. That is the man, Christ Jesus. Forever and eternity, when you get to heaven, you will see a man with nail scars on his brows. Scars on his brown from that crown jammed on his head. Nail scars in his hand. Nail scars in his feet. And we'll have crowns. We're going to get crowns. And we will cast them at his feet and say, That's the one that redeemed me. That's my Savior. That's the one that loves me enough to give himself for me. He's the one that bought me. And praise God, I'm so glad I served him. And now I'm going to be with him for all eternity. This is a great salvation. Oh, praise God. Authority that is now recovered in Christ Jesus. This is a quotation from Psalms chapter 8. I alluded to it earlier. Look at Psalms 8 and 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Yes. Thou made him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. That has put all things under his feet. Although it speaks of man, the right of Hebrews applies this to Jesus Christ, the Messiah. For it is in him that we find the fulfillment of this promise that was made in Psalms chapter 8. Yes. Jesus as the Son of Man 
is to have dominion over the whole creation. He is the Son of God, but he loved to call himself the Son of Man. And so many people in the church, they miss that exalted name, Jesus, and had he humbled himself, became obedient to death, purchased us with his own precious blood, as he went to that old rugged cross and gave himself as a sin substitute for us, so you and I could be redeemed, and whoever calls upon the name of the Lord could be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. There's one God and one mediator between God and man. That is the man, Christ Jesus. That is salvation. And no other man given among men under heaven, whereby you must be saved. He humbled himself. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And God had exalted him and gave him a name above every name. He is the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminent. You and I, we have been born again of all because of the precious prayer. Go on and pray for you. Sons of the glory to make the captain of their salvation 
Look at this. Perfect. 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 Oh, I, I've got so many problems, Pastor. Have you ever suffered to where you poured out your blood to redeem someone? Some of us suffered in combat. We saw blood shed, but not to redeem people. I mean, he became lower than the angels. He became a man because the children were part partakers of flesh and blood. He, Jesus Christ himself, likewise. Oh, he has all power and authority in his name. Guess what? If you look to him in his body, the devil is subject to you. That's the treasure that Paul is speaking about. These are the revelations that, that God wants the church to get a hold of. You pray any way you want to, but I'll tell you one thing. You'll see cancer die in the name of Jesus. You'll see alcohol bound to the name of Jesus. You'll see drugs and fentanyl and sexual trafficking and all that junk bow to the name of Jesus because the devil knows that Jesus stripped him of his power, yes. made a show of him openly, yes. triumphed over yes. him, and God raised him from the dead and gave him a name above every name. It happened right there in the region of darkness and hell itself when Jesus took the keys of death and hell by the devil and handed them off to his church. And I hope the church can get a hold of that. Hebrews 2 and 10. For it became him for whom are all things. I love this. And by whom are all things. And bring many sons unto glory. Yes. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. There's a lot of suffering in this world. Yes. The Son of God became the Son of Man. So that the sons of men could become the sons of God. Yes. What a treasure. When Adam sinned, instead of living a life where God reigned, with man being submitted to God, self reigned. Yeah. When self sits on the throne of your heart, you are in big trouble. Yeah. You've got to get self off the throne to even get saved. Yeah. When you want what you want more than you want to do what God wants you to do, you're in big trouble. When you humble yourself and are crucified with Christ, and no matter what the suffering, I'm not talking about sickness and disease, it's, it will cost you as a cost to the cross. It will cost you something to serve God, to obey God, to go into all of your world, to go into the crack houses. I've been there. To, to go in, into the pool laws and pull people out. I've been there. When, when you sell your heart to God completely, He will put a call on your life and you'll find yourself doing things you thought you would never do. But I promise you one thing, you will not be afraid. Amen. You'll go in there with boldness and you'll know that God sent you and He's coming out. Hallelujah. So, it was for this life that Jesus came to redeem us from the self life. And to bring us back to God and submission to God with a dependence upon God. Yes. Sometimes I think, well, you can do that, Jerry. And then I can say, well, what do you want me to do? There are good things that we all have. There are some things we can do. But are you going to take and let self reign and do everything you want to do? Or are you going to stop long enough to say, God, what is your will? Yes. What is your will in my life? I'm willing, God, to do what you want me to do. The church is not raised there. Everybody's jockeying for position. I want this position. I, want, I could care less about position. Matter of fact, if I was a doorkeeper, it'd be a whole lot easier on me. I would have to study and, and meditate and read the Word of God and, and pray. I just stand. Welcome to Westmoreland, the beloved Broad Church, bringing hurting families to the healing Jesus. This is my assignment. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus learned obedience to the things he suffered. I read that to you. He submitted himself to the Father's will, even to the death of the cross. It was his delight 
to do the Father's will. And this was evidence in everything that he did. In Isaiah 14, when the, the devil decided he would take over the throne of God, and Jesus looked at him, oh, when I was in the spirit world, I saw he chose to him. The devil tried to exalt himself. And Jesus looked at him, a created being. He created all things, angels, principalities, thrones, dominions, yes. man, animals, birds, earth. He spoke it all into existence. Yes, and when that devil tried to exalt himself, Jesus saw what he was trying to do against his father. That's why when he came to this earth, he came to do the father's will. Yes. He loved the father. Yes. He loved the father so much. He, he's looked at that devil and cast him out of heaven. He yes. said, I saw him all like that. Two times. Two times. He was called Lucifer one time in the Bible. Oh, sir. I spoke to him one day. I saw that. I said, I'm going home and look it up. No way I remember Lucifer ever being called Lucifer, son of the morning, except when he was hit one of the archangels in heaven. When he tried to exalt himself, Jesus kicked him out. He stripped him then of his name. And in the region of darkness, when he redeemed you and me, he stripped him a second time. He brought him to know. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, Mr. Zero. That's the devil. Mr. Zero. He's brought him to know. Some people say, oh, I wouldn't talk like that. I would be afraid to talk like that. I thought the devil was behind that door. I'd go kick it down to see if he was there. Once you get Holy Ghost Bones, you're living right. You're not afraid. I'm not afraid to live. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid of anybody taking my credential. I'm not afraid of the government coming after me because of what I preach. I'm not afraid to go into combat. I'm not afraid to face death. I've looked it in the face many, many times. And I'll go nowhere until God says, Son, come on home. Amen. Go praise God. Jesus submitted himself to the Father's will. It was his delight in the Father's will. It was evidenced by everything that he did. Yes. As a captain of our salvation, as our leader, he was perfect by what he suffered. He was perfected brother, by what he suffered. So we could be perfected in him. Look at Hebrews 2 and 11. For both he that sanctified and those who are sanctified are all of one which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. Will I sing praise unto you, Hallelujah. And again I will put my trust in him, and again behold, I am the children of God which thou hast given me. Yes. In this verse, we see how oneness with Christ. He was praying that you I preach God prayer in the garden. He prayed, he said, Father. I pray that they may be in one as we are one. I am thou and thou and me. That they may be one in us. That the world may know that thou hast loved them. Yes. That thou hast loved me. Right. How much does God love you? He spat out his own son. Right. To deliver right. us right. all. Oh, glory. How shall he not with them also free God. Give us all things. Both he that sanctifies and those who are sanctified, That's right. we're all one. I like that. Yeah. The Son and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He and we are one with the Father. One with the Father. We're both partakers of God's life and of God's holiness. How about that? Yes. You are a partaker of God's holiness. You have received his divine nature. Peter said that, that we are partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Yes. See, the Son and many sons all cry out the Father as obedient sons of the Father. Yes. yes. It's boring to some people, but it's so rich and so oh, Yes. Christ will one day present us to the Father. Yes. He will not be ashamed to call us his brethren. Yes. Isn't that good? Yes. He will not be ashamed to call us. Yes. He and we are also Christ. 
it can we are also one in humanity. Yes, Lord. Thank we are one with the Father, mm. but we are one in the men, and we are one in humanity. Thank you, Lord. What a treasure. Thank you. What a great salvation. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. This is the point of chapter 2. Christ, the eternal God, had become a man, mm. thus sharing in the humanity of the leaders. Hebrews 2, 14, for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him, that had the power of death, that is the devil. Yes. I love this. And the little them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That's right. Are oh, people oh, afraid of death? You can't die but one time. <laughs> and if you die and you're born again, you're going to hell. That's the people I don't want to leave behind, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be wonderful when we see Jesus. <laughs> Christ became a man so that as a man he might meet and conquer and destroy the power of death and destroy the devil. Yes. He became like us so we could become like him. And now death has no power over Jesus. And neither does it have any power of those whose lives are given with Christ in God. Death has no power. Paul said, Oh, death, where is thy speak? Oh, great, where is thy victory? Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory in Jesus Christ. He gave himself to be totally like us, so we should give ourselves to be totally like him. That's beautiful. Hebrews 2, 16. Early, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like a man unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered the intended, he is able to suffer with the help of the intended. Yes. Jesus became like us, so we can become like him. Yes. He was made sin of our sins. So we can be made the rights of God in Christ. Now this term, high priest, I look this up, is used over and over in the book of Hebrews in reference to Jesus Christ. Yet it is not used in this manner in any other book in the New Testament. Jesus suffered all the temptation we will ever experience. Yet he never sinned. And as a faithful high priest, he is able to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. It was a perfect sacrifice. He is perfected for us, those that are sanctified. Your perfection is not in how holy you live. Your perfection is that you are willing to obey the word of God and Christ has perfected us. He did it all. We yes. just received this great gift. Hallelujah. So we in chapter 2 see that his priesthood is characterized by his divinity. It is also characterized by his perfect manhood. And because he overcame and conquered everything, he conquered everything that he ever faced. He has made us more than conquerors. So we need to heed the warning given in this chapter because there are real dangers. They are addressed to those who have experienced this great salvation. I close with this warning given at the beginning, Hebrews 2. Therefore, we ought to give an earnest to the things which we have heard, at least at any time we should let them slip. To take heed, yes, we drift away. What a great salvation.